Balance Sheet Analysis. The balance sheet is a snapshot in time showing the assets and liabilities of a business. The assets can be divided between current and non-current assets. The current assets are things that the company owns and that it is intending to turn into cash within the next 12 months. Whereas non-current assets are things that the company owns and that it needs to run the business. Current liabilities are amounts that the company owes and has to pay within 12 months from the balance sheet date, whereas non-current liabilities are amounts that the company owes and has to repay in more than 12 months. Deducting the liabilities from the assets gives the net assets, that is the assets net of or less the liabilities. If the company was to cease trading, then these net assets would be paid back to the shareholders of the company. And so the assets, less the liabilities of the business, is represented by, or is equal to, the shareholders' funds. If we look at the balance sheet of Tesco, we can identify the five main elements. Non-current assets are £38 billion. Current assets are £13 billion. Current liabilities are 19 billion and non current liabilities are 14 billion. If we deduct the total liabilities of 33 billion from the total assets of 51 billion, we get the net assets of 18 billion, which is equal to the shareholders' funds of 18 billion. Tesco is funded via debt and equity. The debt of 14 billion and the equity of 18 billion together make the total capital employed in Tesco of 32 billion. So how does Tesco use that capital? Tesco has invested 38 billion into the assets that it uses to run the business, primarily buildings out of which to operate. Tesco also has working capital that it needs to run the business on a day-to-day -day basis, i.e. to meet its obligations as they fall due. Due to its business model, it's able to operate on negative working capital of minus 6 billion. So investment capital of 38 billion and negative working capital of 6 billion makes total capital employed of 32 billion. So we can see how, by identifying the five primary sections of the balance sheet, we can identify how a company is funded and how it uses that funding. Tesco has 32 billion of capital of which approximately 40% is provided by debt and the rest through equity investment. That capital has been allocated to investment capital, although Tesco by its nature needs a lot of working capital too. Now let's compare Tesco to another company, Amazon. Amazon's balance sheet may be structured a little differently, but if we identify the five main sections of the balance sheet, we can see that Amazon has non-current assets of 11 billion, current assets of 21 billion, current liabilities of 19 billion, and non-current liabilities of 5 billion. Net assets, and thus shareholders' funds, are therefore 8 billion. We can now compare Amazon to Tesco. Amazon has 13 billion of capital. Tesco has a lot of investment capital and quite a lot of working capital, whereas Amazon has comparably less investment capital and more working capital. This makes sense, as Amazon doesn't really need so many buildings due to its online presence, and it can rent warehouses if it so needs, but it does need a lot of working capital for all that stock. Tesco is funded approximately 40% through debt, and 60% through equity, making the 32 billion of capital employed. Amazon only has 13 billion of capital employed, made up of 5 billion from debt and 8 billion from equity. So while the debt to equity mix is the same as Tesco, about 40% debt and 60% equity, the total amount of capital employed is considerably smaller. Now let's look at the balance sheet of National Grid, who are responsible for transporting gas and electricity around the UK. Once again, by breaking the balance sheet down into the five main elements, 
we can identify that the national grid has 30 billion of non-current assets, current assets of 7 billion, current liabilities also of 7 billion, and non-current liabilities of 25 billion, billion, leaving net assets of 5 billion, which is the equity or shareholders' funds. Again, we can now compare National Grid with both Tesco and Amazon. National Grid has total capital employed of 30 billion. We can see that the National Grid needs comparatively more investment capital, which makes sense as it needs lots of infrastructure, such as towers, pylons, substations and pipes in the ground, but much less working capital. In terms of funding, the 30 billion of capital is primary, primarily made up of the 25 billion of debt, that's 80% of the total capital employed, and only 5 billion or 20% of equity. Now let's look at another company, Norland Managed Services. This is a UK company who provide managed building services, i.e. they look after the running of office blocks, employing security staff, receptionists, cleaners, and maintaining the fabric of the building. Norlin has non-current assets of 6 million, current assets of 120 million, current liabilities of 88 million, and non-current liabilities of 15 million, leaving net assets of 15. 23 million, again which is equal to the shareholders funds of 23 million. Again we can now compare Norland to Tesco, Amazon and the national grid. Norland as a service provider needs very little infrastructure. They can hire their offices that they work from and most of their employees are based at their clients premises. They do however need much more working capital essentially to manage the day-to-day -day cash flow. Looking at the funding of the business, the total capital of 38 million is provided by some 40% of debt and the rest as equity. We can now consider the consequences of these business models when we consider lending criteria. Companies with high non-current assets will have assets on which the loan can be secured. For companies with high amounts of working capital, cash flow will become a key consideration as they may not have the infrastructure on which to secure the loan. And so, by identifying the five primary sections of the balance sheet, we can identify the key lending considerations for a business. And that is how to analyse the balance sheet.